Malaysian independence fighter and fierce communist guerrilla Chin Peng has died at the age of 90. Chin was the last of the major guerrilla commanders who fought colonialism in Asia, a group including Sukarno, Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam and An San in Burma. He fought alongside the British during the Japanese occupation of Malaya, but in 1948 began a struggle to establish an independent communist state. It was a struggle he lost and he died in Thailand where he'd been living for years in exile. As Faisal Mokhtar reports, the Malaysian government will not even allow his ashes to be returned home. As Malaysia celebrated 50 years since independence, in a small village across the border in Thailand, the family of Chin Peng were in mourning. But in Malaysia, feelings about him are deeply divided. So you said that the people the crowd don't like the Chin Peng. Maybe they they will get to suffer from from Chin Peng activity. But some of them, some of them respect Chin Peng because he loves and respect Chin Peng as a lead. He's a hero. A young Chin Peng fought alongside the British against the Japanese during World War II. He was honored with an OBE. But in 1948, he began a struggle to establish an independent communist state. About 10,000 people are thought to have been killed during the emergency, as the insurgency came to be known. It was a campaign of jungle warfare that resulted in accusations of brutality on both sides. A peace agreement was signed in 1989, and Chin Peng lived the rest of his life in exile. His funeral took place in Bangkok. Here, his family, friends and comrades came to pay their respects. Lao Xiang was one of his comrades. Lao Xiang is also barred from going home. Even in death, Xing Peng will still not be allowed in. You mustn't forget the uh, victims of the communists. They're very, very emotional about what had happened and uh, how many people who have died and how many people, so many people who have um, been wounded and uh, so many people have lost their livelihood and so forth. So there's great emotional outpouring against, you know, bringing uh, his body to be buried in Malaysia. But this isn't the opinion of everyone. Several members of parliament in the opposition as well as those in the ruling coalition believe that his remains should be allowed to be brought back to Malaysia. Tian Chua, an opposition MP, attended his funeral. Our evaluation of his, uh, his role in the country, whatever we can agree or disagree over his ideology or his form of struggle, uh, we must recognize that he has his part of, he was part of Malaysian history. Um, he and his generation um, shape the what we are today, and uh, together with many of of the other leaders in Southeast Asia, they shape the map of Southeast Asia. Akanit is a retired general from Thailand. He was involved in fighting against the Communist Party along the border. He is one of the few who forgives Jin Peng. I, 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 fight, I fought again the, the, the city, communist terrorist. That day I was the company commander. You know one year, I lost my soldier. About 50, 30, 30 died, 20 wounded. Yes, under my command. 
But I can't, I can't forgive him. Forgive, forgive him. But whether forgiven or not, it seems as the decision has already been made. Recently, as Parliament convened, the Home Minister gave his reasoning on why the remains will not be allowed in. It's not so much about the ashes, but uh, some group of people will be, uh, will be uh, constructing memorial, memorial or some other form uh, of uh, giving them uh, recognition. And it's a decision which members of the now defunct Communist Party feels to be unjust. Uh, but for the family, it's a decision that is being respected for now. Ching Peng's nephew has said that they will not smuggle his ashes in, contrary to news reports, as he deserves to return in a more dignified way. For Asia Calling, this is Fight Zomafta from Malaysia Kings.